everybody and welcome to a Black Beetle Health IG Live. Today we're going to be talking about finding purpose through community advocacy and I'm really excited actually to welcome um, Teray Lawrence Tullock. Um, Teray is a trustee for the LGBT Foundation in Manchester. She's also a member of Rainbow Noir, which is a peer support group for LGBTQI plus people of colour. Um, really excited, as I said, to kind of have her on just because she's one of the uh, people that we're interviewing who actually the thing that we're talking about isn't the job that she gets paid for. So I think it would be kind of, um, yeah, I'm, I'm just looking forward to kind of what she's got to say and um, how she can share a little bit about the journey that she's been on um, since leaving university. So just waiting for Teray to um, join us in our, our live here. Um, happy Pride to those of you joining us from Manchester. This is the last day of the Manchester Pride uh, weekend. They've had an alternative Pride online. As part of that, um, the LGBT Foundation has put on a panel, there's a webinar, lots of health-based uh, sort of uh, webinars, different things related to um, sort of COVID, HIV and, and relationships as well. And you might see some familiar faces on there because Black Beetle Health was involved in helping to produce that. So um, if you haven't seen that already, please go and check it out. Um, we, uh, yeah, it's, um, oh, sorry, just having a little bit of technical here, just trying to get to right in to the chat. No. Well, I'm not really sure what's going on here, but that's okay. Um, so just bear with us while we get that sorted out. Just waiting for Teray to send uh, an invitation. But as we said, yeah, Black Beetle Health, doing lots of different events that are happening this week as well. So please go and check out our feed. There's stuff on our stories as well. And of course, as we said, the LGBT um, Foundation collaboration that we've done um, with those webinars, they really were uh, great fun to film. And I hope you'll find them really sort of informative um, and useful as well. So um, make sure you give us a wave, um, send us some comments, let us know about uh, what you think, if there's anything that you want to ask, we'd love to sort of um, answer those questions for you. Um, today we're going to have sort of about 45 minutes or thereabouts, just kind of, as we said, discussing kind of personal experience. And um, one of the things that I think is quite interesting is often people think that they need to be paid to, to make a difference like it needs to be their main job and actually there is sort of real benefit in doing things where you can um, just outside of um, what you kind of get paid for in your professional sort of day job and, and if you can translate those skills it's absolutely amazing and that's what we would you know I guess that's what we're all kind of dreaming for I definitely um, know that the job that I do I'm a registered midwife which I absolutely love and I, I really love being able to kind of lend my skills to Black Beetle Health most of the team um, here are sort of health professionals um, or have lots of different skills in other ways that they're lending so um, we um, what I'm hoping is in ways that you can get involved in organisations and potentially even make it um, a job that you get paid for. So, Teresa should be with us very soon. Hello! Hey. Hey, you were leaving me hanging there and I was, I was <laughs> worrying. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> That's okay. Everyone's just been listening to me ramble on. So I gave you a brief introduction um, before just to say that you are a trustee for the LGBT Foundation. That's correct. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that you live in Manchester, member of Rainbow Noir. Saw Rainbow Noir in the chat there. So giving you a wave and a huff, I think, as well. Um, a few people there. Um, but maybe you could just um, tell us a little bit about uh, about you you know we're so grateful for you coming on here and sort of being under the microscope so um yeah take the floor yeah okay hi there. um my name is Teray she her pronouns um as Adelaide said I am one of the trustees at LGBT foundation um I'm also um a BAME role model um Stonewall um I'm the Cutie Park um I'm a co-chair of a Cutie Park working group at LGBT Foundation as well um 
I'm also a bride in practice champion and recently just got put on to the working group of the Greater Manchester Equality Alliance as well. Um, and that's all just uh, voluntary work. I think paid work. I do um, I work in the finance and insurance sector um, and I have done for the past five years. Um, but, uh, but, you know, I, I think I've got my hands in uh, lots of different parts. So um, <laughs> as you can see. You sound incredibly busy and I, um, I, I can't even fathom how you're getting all of that stuff done, but hopefully we'll touch on that in a little bit anyway. Um, so you kind of mentioned that you it's not your paid job, you work in finance and, and insurance, did you say? Um, okay. Yeah, and I guess what I'm kind of interested in is how you got to where you are now. Where did that start for you? Okay, um... Well, um, I think it all kind of probably started uh, when I was from university, I think. I think that's where it all came, kind of came together. Um, I went to Keele University in Staffordshire. And um, a lot of what the degree that I did um, touched on um, concepts of culture, um, along with like the media and communication. And um, one of the modules in there um, spoke a lot about home and so for some people like, oh, yeah, I'm just going to go home or I'm just going to, you know, go to my house. Or, but there's actually a lot of a deeper a meaning towards um, the word home or the concept of home. And I think um, that really sparked an interest with me, especially being from um, different marginalized like kind of groups as well, being um, a black British and then Caribbean heritage. The idea of home for me is something different to say somebody else who mm. identifies with all these different things. And then when you put things like sexuality onto it um, and gender identity and all these different things, you're obviously parts of lots of different groups. So home to you might feel a lot different. Um, so because of that, um, I joined a lot of different societies, um, you know, and I um, did a lot of diversity work. So at university, I was like... Um, equality and diversity officer for the postgraduate association and um, when I was doing my master's and um, I did a lot of work with the students union and then af obviously after leaving Keele um, coming up to Manchester with my now wife um, I started to join um, I joined in Rainbow Noir um, I'd literally never heard of it um, I think I saw it on Facebook just at a glance and we thought you know let's go give it a try and we've not looked back and that was you know about five six years ago um so you know it's been it's been it's been quite a journey obviously i've picked up different friends along the way um different people pointing me into different directions and i think naturally the interest has just grown um and then obviously now ending with me um sitting on the board at the um at lgbt foundation has kind of like really solidified my interest in um, diversity and inclusion. Amazing, that's so fantastic. And um, um, we kind of spoke before as we like prep into this interview, and I know that you you weren't quite sure about um, whether you kind of qualified, and I think that's a lot of you know things. I can certainly identify with the idea of like feeling like you're not qualified to do the thing that you're doing. Um, so so how did you how did you end up as a trustee? Because um, even though you've got all this amazing experience in university, um, which for me, I can see like the obvious sort of link between the stuff that you were doing there and, and what you're doing now. But did that feel like a natural progressive step for you or did you need a bit of encouragement? I definitely needed the encouragement. I think um, it's difficult because when it's not your day job and then you look at your CV, well, in my case, I looked at my CV and all I saw was like insurance, insurance, finance, finance, finance. So when I was going through the recruitment process for LGBT Foundation, I was thinking, I just, I, I don't know what I have to offer here. But someone told me that it's not just about the qualifications and the work experience that you put down on your paper. It's also about the lived experience as well. Mm -hmm. And I think in the 30 years that I've been alive and been on earth, I think I've picked up um, enough life experience to allow me to qualify, um, to give my perspective on a board like this. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, I'm really grateful that LGBT Foundation gave me the opportunity to do so because 
um there's often uh there's often a lot of there's often a lot of problems in getting people of color onto platforms like that mm-hmm. and getting them to spaces like that and so to kind of start the start their journey in trying to diversify their organization to start from the top and putting me in a place at the top mm-hmm. it's a massive massive you know privilege for me um you know and i'm really enjoying it so far um and I think, and I encourage other people who, if they think that they're not qualified, um, well, qualified enough to sit anywhere or sit on panels or to apply for jobs, to really think about the lived experience that they do have and the voluntary experience that they do have. Because all the work that I do for diversity inclusion right now is all voluntary. Um, and, you know, it's great to be able to kind of put the time in and to, to give a bit of time back to communities that have helped me so far far on the way I think that's just such a wonderful message that you've kind of given us there Um, and yeah I think that you know the LGBT foundation sort of uh, are sort of making moves it seems to sort of try and like you said diversify the people that are, are speaking to them that are sharing their lived experience and I really do love that idea that um you know, it's not about your qualification, not about what's on your CV necessarily. It's about what you're living through, what you you being in this body, in this skin kind of means and how you can sort of help to communicate that to other people and how that might impact them. Um, so, yeah, I think that's just such a lovely sentiment. Um, so you mentioned kind of that your co-chair, I think, um, on the, is it the Cutie Pop Working Group? Is that right? So, yeah, yeah. yeah that's it. Um, yeah, so, um, which is queer, trans, intersex, people of colour, just for anybody who's joining us that isn't aware. Um, can you, what else are you doing? Tell us at the LGBT Foundation, how, how long have you been there and what's kind of been happening so far? Um, well, I've been on the board for about a year now, um, which has gone ridiculously quick. Um, it's coming up to a year. Um, and a lot of the work that they're doing right now surrounding like BAME and inclusion work is really just trying to build trust and to kind of like be as transparent as they can um, with um, cutie park communities um, in Manchester, um, just trying to build um, a better, a, to build a better rapport um, and to help out. I mean, we're all kind of on this journey together. Um, we have all these different organisations that are all doing fantastic work um, for cutie park communities and um, I feel like LGBT Foundation are, are trying their hardest to kind of, you know, to kind of put that forward and to um, help people within their workforce, within the organisation to kind of feel a lot more included. Um, and rightfully so. Um, they should never have felt othered in the first place and not just LGBT Foundation, just in society as a, as a whole. Um, so, yeah, a lot of it is around building trust, being transparent helping to diversify, helping to um, to show representation, things like increasing engagement um, and also tackling the racism and um, putting steps forward to, to provide training and things for allies. Um, you know, that's all important work. It all goes part and parcel. So myself and other members of the board, um, you know, we're, we're working hard to, to get that, to get those wheels in motion, to be applying for funding and, you know, getting the work out there to help the, these communities that, you know, the work on it is just so long overdue. Yeah, amazing. Thank you. Um, and I really like, there's so much of what you've just said that I'm just kind of like taking in, but I did notice that you mentioned allyship and that was one of the things that we were going to talk a little bit about today. Um, and I'm really interested in sort of what allyship kind of means to you. And yeah, I don't want to put too many words, but you <laughs> you take it away. I think allyship is important. Um, I think so many, so there's so many examples of, of work that's fantastic work that's happened. Mm-hmm. And a lot of it, is down to the group itself, of course, and we always have to give credit to the group, but a lot of it is down to allyship as well. And I think that is important to recognize um, the influence of allyship um, and to know that we are all allies in one 
one form um, in one shape or another. Um, there was a module that I did actually um, when I was doing Pride in Practice and it surrounded a lot around allyship. Um, and it was just, it, it just explored the importance of, of understanding your role in trying to be an ally. So for myself, say for example, I, I would be a trans ally, you know, if there are any trans people who needed help or if I heard something that was transphobic or, you know, if there was something that I needed to do without obviously taking the, the shine off of, of that person, it would be me to kind of stick up for or educate as much as I could or signpost and send them somewhere else to get that information. But for me to just kind of stand back and ignore certain things would be wrong. So therefore it's the same. It's exactly the same when it comes to cutie park or to BAME communities in general. If you're going out and you hear something that is racist, if you hear something that is um, ignorant or, you know, you, you hear something that is completely, that makes you feel uncomfortable. It's to kind of encourage your allies is to speak out about it and to understand that you know things like saying black isn't a bad it's not a black it's not a, it's not a bad thing people are black i am black so you know if you see a black person being targeted you should go to someone um nearby whoever you feel comfortable to speak to and say that black person this black person is being targeted because of their race and i think the more we kind of get people used to using this language mm -hmm. They're not going to offend by offend you by using the word black. Um, you know, the the easier it will be in the future for for you know communities to kind of gel together a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, I think I think allies should be encouraged to kind of you know to educate themselves and not just lean on um, certain groups like the cutie park groups. Not to lean on the cutie park groups to always educate them. You know. Google is there for everybody. There's a lot of information that I find out about for myself. Um, and so obviously, you know, and especially being under, I don't want to say being under the microscope, but like, you know, being in the limelight so much and then having to educate on top of it is tiring. Um, so that's why you need um, avenues to kind of, um, you know, to allow training and things like that to happen. Um, mm -hmm. And it's only through those kind of avenues that you'll be able to really, educate people um, and make spaces like organizations a better place to be a better place to work a better place to use as a service user um, so that's that's a lot of what we're doing really I think um, you've just uncovered like so many things there and um, just to say that I've also I'm in the process of doing the pride in practice um, sort of modules for uh, champion accreditation and for anybody who doesn't know the LGBT foundation has something called the pride in practice training academy and um, you can find it on their website um, initially a lot of the work they did was within kind of like healthcare so primary care settings um, but it's open to anybody and like you I found the allyship module just so helpful in so many ways in like yeah. really basic ways that I'd never thought about um, and I think you know we're we all there is intersection we talked you talked about when you were talking about home and you were talking about you know all the different aspects of the person that you are basically intersecting and how that affects your experience and you know lots of us live uh, um, on those those intersections and so we experience things slightly differently but equally there are kind of characteristics that we don't identify with and we can be really good allies to those people and I remember kind of once um, I think it was at one of the pride vigils um, I think it was Kate who was doing it was comparing and said something like you know pick it pick another letter that's not you and make that make that letter your you know you make yourself their ally and it was kind yeah. of a, a sort of quite a crude way you know like a really simple way of doing it but actually just if you just look outwards you'll see people that aren't like you and you'll see people that need supporting and being marginalized um, and we can be allies so so easily and I guess the two things that I really took away from that module so one really practical thing which was I didn't know you could report a hate crime on behalf of somebody else which yeah. seems like really obvious yeah. um but um and the other thing was just thinking about like just pick things that you're good at you know yeah. whatever it is that you're good at if you like IT is your thing great 
build websites, build databases, you know, if you're a designer, create flyers, you know, find people that need your skills. Because not everybody is about kind of being on a platform and talking and, you know, um, for a lot of people that's really uncomfortable. But if you're an artist, you know, craftivism, whatever it is, you know, if you write really well, whatever it is, just find a thing that you're really good at and that you enjoy and work out how you can do something about that. Um, and I think that one of the key things that I've been challenged about is in this time where physically I haven't been able to get out and do stuff because of COVID-19 and I've been um, shielding, just think about what am I, what other things can I do? You know, can I sign more petitions? Can I, you know, beyond reading, because I'm always doing reading, but sometimes your brain's like, yeah. so you know can I sign petitions can I um connect with people that I know are on their own and um like you said if you see somebody being targeted and you're worried about kind of jumping in you don't always have to kind of get involved but actually you can just stand by that person that's being targeted you can um you know if it's online you can transfer your effort rather than defending statements yeah. and stuff like that just send them a message and say you know are you okay is there anything I can do for you like these are really sort of great ways that we can be be allies and and actually we some of these things we might just kind of do naturally but yeah I really I really really enjoyed that module um so yeah thank you so um we talked a little bit about um the LGBT foundation is there any, anything else coming up that you haven't kind of shed light on that you can share with us um at the foundation um, nothing, nothing as such. No, I think um, a lot of the one of the good things that um, the L that LGBT Foundation have done is um, they they did put a, a, a quite a big update on um, to say what you know what their plans are in the future um, in terms of um, BAME and inclusion work, um, and I think that's just fantastic because writing down each task and writing down each thing that they plan to do it holds them accountable mm. um, and I obviously I encourage that and also it just shows that you know a bit more transparency between LGBT foundation and cutie pop people um, you know it, it it's a little bit better to kind of build trust so I think everything in there in terms of like finding the funding and establishing um, a role there will be a, um, a role out for um, specifically for BAME work which again is great um, and also um, in terms of recruitment at LGBT foundation the recruitment process has completely changed um, it's it's changed for the better it's changed um, to kind of remove some of those unconscious biases um, and anything that they feel uh, the the person who might might who's applying for the job might feel would be pushed back you know um the recruitment process has changed to kind of allow that to have um a diverse panel of people who are doing the interviewers the, whoever's doing the selection process um it, to be thoroughly screened so i think there are already there are already a lot of steps in there but as with anything um you have to kind of do baby steps you know mm. you can't just do everything all in once and as exciting as it all is and as much as everybody is anticipating good change big changes we have to do it slowly to do it properly yeah, uh, yeah. and I, the board at the moment um everyone who's on the board at the moment are doing a really really good job in trying to kind of push all of this forward um so I would just say watch this space really um you know, <laughs> keep, keep an eye out because you know we've worked so hard to kind of to, to get these small but significant changes done so far. Yeah. So if there's anything that anybody sees, um, any positions, voluntary or paid positions that they see and they want to apply for it, I encourage you really to apply for them because, um, you know, experience, your, your, your lived experience, your voluntary experience, it is all valid and is just as valid as your qualifications, whether it's GCSEs or whether it's, you know, you've gone right up to your master's level, it's all relevant and great. And so I just really look forward to seeing more people um, join in really and mm -hmm. make and take advantage of the work that we've all been doing. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And thank you so much. I feel like that's a really encouraging message. Um, what so that's kind of about what's happening at the LGBT Foundation. What what do you think is next for you? Because it feels like you're on a a particular traje trajectory. Do you feel like you're going to be stepping away from violence? 
I don't know. I'm not too sure. I mean, now it's got to a point where I'm so immersed in all of this, like, you know, diversity inclusion work that now I'm thinking, well, do I make a move? Do I move over? Do I stay? Like, I'm so, I'm very much on the fence right now um, because obviously, you know, the the workplace that I work at right now are completely, you know, they're fantastic. They're so supportive um, and they're obviously very happy to have me and I'm so happy to be there as well. Um, so we'll see, I suppose. I've, I've kind of gone through life so far, kind of just going with the wind. So I think mm-hmm. I'll just continue with that and hopefully... Um, you know, I'll land a position at some point, which is, you know, completely for me and something that I will enjoy, um, you know, as a career. Um, you know, that will be great. Lovely. There were two things that you kind of touched on when you introduced yourself. One was that you were um, a role model for Stonewall. I think was it a BME role model for Stonewall? Is that right? Yeah. yeah. And, and the other one was um, sitting on an Equality Alliance panel. Is that right? Yeah. Great. Um, the BAME, um, the Stonewall BAME um, thing, that was, uh, we did, they came to Manchester actually and it was a whole, um, it was like a, a, like a little course almost. Um, so it was really informative, really, really great. I met some fantastic people on the way and, um, you know, at the end of it, they've kind of created a little group, like a little support group um, of BAME role models. Um, And the idea with that being is that, you know, you'd have all these little role models all over the UK um, Mm -hmm. who could um, provide support, provide insight to people and, you know, kind of signpost people back to Stonewall if they needed resources um, or assistance with anything. Um, So, yeah, that 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 was really, really good. Um, And with the Greater Manchester Equality Alliance, actually, I only found out that I was um, that I've been you know asked to, to to sit on the working group um only last week really so uh, it was it was new news yeah i only found out on friday um, <laughs> so i'm really really pleased about it um so hopefully this week um they'll give a bit more information about it and you know where we start and you know what's going on with it but even the application for that it was just you know writing everything down and telling them everything that i've done you know it's been it's been really really good um i'm really pleased with it really really chuffed Oh, congratulations. That is really wonderful news. And we'll watch this space for any kind of further developments for that. Um, I'm going to just ask you a couple of questions sort of related to you. Like, I'm really interested in when you kind of feel most productive because you do you do a lot. I've got to be honest. So when do you feel most productive and when do you get rest? How do you manage to get that balance? (laughs) I think I keep I keep a good timetable of everything to be honest Mm. um and I try and stick hard I I, I try and stick as much to my calendar as possible Mm. and anything that falls outside my calendar or over the weekend unless it's a board meeting and it's been put into a calendar from ages ago which you know a lot of the organizations I help volunteer with they're very good at organizing organizing in advance Mm. um I, I keep my weekends free I keep the majority of my evenings free Um, with everything else being done, you know, obviously working day nine till five and then, you know, any voluntary work until latest seven o'clock. So I'm quite strict with things like that because I don't, you know, it's, it's easy to kind of fall into a space where you get like burnt out and then there's no point in, in offering yourself and being burnt out and then not being able to help anybody else and you know you, obviously you have to look about your own health and your family life as well it's all mm. part and part. um so really it's just about organization and being strict with your organization and knowing that you know if this is this is just because you have a you know a, a spare moment in your diary doesn't mean that you should fill it with work it means that you should keep it free and then you can do your work next week <laughs> on Monday. Yeah, uh, you know, I really like, I feel really, really attached right now. <laughs> do it on Monday because otherwise you'll get burnt out and then, you know, you're just not going to be used to anybody. And then you're, I don't ever, I don't ever, ever want to get to a place where I'm starting to resent the work that I'm doing because I'm tired. Yeah. Um, I think I really enjoy what I'm doing. So I, I don't want to ever resent it. So I think as well, that's why I'm trying hard to you know um keep it all um organized and stick yeah. into my timetables that's I, I really like uh, thank you for that message because i feel like you just delivered that personally to me <laughs> but, um <laughs> no i love to make a timetable i love to like spend loads of time on it but 
it's the discipline of keeping to it because um, yeah. I like to think that I'm very optimistic with my time. So I'm like, well, I, I have just got like this five minutes. So maybe I'll just like, you know, start the job and then that job is obviously not on my job. Don't do it because like, <laughs> you make, so, make space for five minutes and then before you know it, you're, you're doing this and you're doing that and you're answering this email, then all of a sudden you're having to make a phone call and then it's never yeah. ending. And then... Yeah. You know, you kind of get stuck into it. It's not. It's not good for you. It's not good. <laughs> so, but a lot of people here congratulating you on your like got like boundary setting. Um, because I mean, it's admirable. It's like what I aspire to, basically. Um, but I'm not quite there yet. So yeah, but I think boundaries. You are right. Boundaries are really, really, um, just so important in all areas of our life and actually what we could really do with is other people to hold us to account to those boundaries i don't know if you need people to whether your wife's one of those people but <laughs> does no, that. i think if i've gone a bit too far or you know i'm sitting down you know you kind of start hearing grumbles a little bit like you know come on like, <laughs> it's time to go you know but it's, it's it it goes all in all senses, you know, everything that you're doing in your life, there should always be a boundary, yes. um, with every aspect of it and work in the grand scheme of things is only maybe a, a quarter of your life. You know, you have all these other things that also need boundaries. So it's important to set those in because when you start to slip into to bad habits um, and allowing little things to slip, then it will follow suit with the rest of your life. And, you know, mental health wise, it's just, it's not great. You'll just be emotionally and physically tired. And we don't, we don't want that at all. <laughs> you know? That's so fantastic. We yeah. No. I just, you know, I think you've got a really important message here because actually what we are talking about is a lot of the stuff that you've been doing, you do outside of your kind of professional job. And there might be people kind of thinking, you know, how is that possible to do? And actually probably what you need to do before you, go for any sort of position is just look at your life and do you have space to volunteer in that capacity that you'd like to do and, and if you don't is there something else you can do in your five minutes which yeah. is actually just five minutes you know yeah. is that like signing petitions and things like that or is that you know setting aside 10 minutes a day to read a little bit of a book which maybe doesn't translate into a larger role um but yeah I think that you you've really kind of hit it there so so thank you so much um we're just going to kind of wind up a little bit now so uh taking ourselves going to finish just before quarter two um but what I'd really um like to know is you know what's COVID been like for you how's that sort of affected your your personal experience yeah, it's been difficult it's been yeah. really difficult um i think before it was it was easy because you know you, you could kind of go out and see people and go to places and visit places and now obviously with a lot of the restrictions in place you we can't we couldn't really go anywhere um mm -hmm. to the shop and back literally that was it and even though it's kind of eased and then kind of been put in place again back in Manchester, mm, of course. it's still very, very difficult. Um, but I think I'm just grateful that a lot of the people that I do spend most of my time with, a lot of family members that I do, you know, speak to a lot, um, they are all kind of on social media. They are, use, they are using things like Zoom and house party and WhatsApp calling and, um, as much as you can kind of get like the zoom zoom fatigue and you know being too much screen time um, it has been great as well because a lot of people who I didn't I, I found that I didn't have time to kind of talk to a lot um, somehow have found the time and the capacity to now talk to them mm -hmm. and and I think that as well is down to um, the commuting times as well um, mm -hmm, yes. that, you know I'm at home I wake up okay it's time for work and then when I finished I'm finished I don't have to sit in an hour's worth of traffic to get back home it's, it's freed up a lot of, of spare time for me um, so in one sense it's bad because I, I'm you know I'm starting to get sick of being at home now and I can't wait to get back out. But in mm -hmm. one sense, it's kind of brought you closer to, to other people, um, you know, having that time to talk to people and having no other distractions, you know, like going out and, you know, going to, to different places where you, you know, and, and spending money um, unnecessarily on things that yeah. you just didn't necessarily, you, did, you know, you never needed before and you've kind of had to do without it now or, you know, if it's not been in stock. Uh, you know you have to kind of make do with different things different brands it's it's definitely been an eye-opener but um it's nice to kind of see 
I don't even want to say see the light now because <laughs> just in case, you know. But you know, there's a little bit of a lockdown um, at the minute. But you know, hopefully this time next year um, we'll be back to to normal um, and it will all be great again. Yeah, yeah, I really hope so too. And I think that I know the um, experience has been different for different people depending on what you have access to and and your kind of community network. But I hope that um, with some of the time that we've had, people have been able to just just have some peace, just be still and kind of take stock of things. Um, and I know that that's definitely sort of occurred uh, for me. Um, okay, so what is your the takeaway um, from this conversation? What would you like people to take away? I feel like you kind of summed it up like several times over but if you know somebody was just to listen to this last little segment what would you like people to take away from this conversation um I think the only thing really that I would like people to take away is to just kind of have a bit have a bit more faith in yourself um to realize that everything that you've done in your life is just so relevant um and it's difficult a lot of the time because you it's natural that you'll meet lots of different people from all different walks of life. And some of them are like qualified up to their eyeballs and some of them just about made out of senior school. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there is no hierarchy with all of this. Um, So just use, think about what you're good at and use this time while we are kind of stuck inside um, and think about what you're good at and put that forward you know find something that you're going to enjoy because you don't want to be stuck in a job um for the rest of your life that you really really hate you you want to find something that you're really going to enjoy um you know life's too short for it so yeah find what you're good at and stick to it that's what i'll probably say lovely that's amazing um so thank you so much for joining us today it's been really wonderful and i'm actually looking forward to watching this back because i feel like you said so many like little nuggets you're very soundbite worthy so <laughs> be able to go back and kind of write down some some quotes and things but um if people want to get in contact with you or see what you're up to what's the best way for them to do that um i'm on twitter um and uh, obviously on instagram as well um i will comment my twitter on this oh, brilliant thank you on the, on the playback of this video actually if anybody wants to follow me um but apart from that you will find me most likely at lgbt foundation so <laughs> <laughs> excellent um before we finish up is there anything that you haven't had the opportunity to say that you'd like to say no no that's everything i think i think we've covered everything amazing that's wonderful um Tere, thank you so much for joining us and um, i hope you enjoy the rest of your bank holiday You too. See you later. Thank you. So everybody, that is uh, the end of our IG Live. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. I I really am looking forward to watching it back because um, I feel feel like there were so many great messages in there that we could all do with just sort of digesting and taking on into our um, future lives. So thank you for joining us. This will be up on our um, IGTV, which you'll be able to watch back in just a few moments. And we hope that you enjoy the rest of your bank holiday. Bye for now.